How's it going everyone, Laser here, and today I wanted to show you how to change the RGB settings on the Drangdir A75 keyboard. Drangdir allows you to change the settings in two ways. You can either use the built-in features, which you have on the keyboard, but this only allows you to change the RGB settings, or you can use their dedicated software, which allows you also to change the actuation level and rapid trigger settings. So let's start with the changing of RGB using the built-in features of the keyboard. In order to change the effect you want to have on your keyboard when it comes to RGB, you need to use the FN2 function key and arrows to switch between different modes. There's a variety of features available, so you can choose whichever you want. I'm going to start stop at the static color because it will allow me to show you the other features that are available. So if you use the function and up down key, it allows you to change the intensity of the light. And if you use the up key, it allows you to increase the intensity of the lighting so it's much brighter. Now, if you want to have a different color on the keyboard, all you have to do is press function 2 and tap, which toggles between the built-in effect. Obviously, this only applies when it's possible to change the color because when, for example, you have a toggle effect which switches for different colors, using function and tap won't do anything as the keyboard displays various colors anyway. Another good shortcut to know is the function 2 and W to change to Windows layout. Uh, my keyboard by default came with a Mac layout, so I had to use function 2 and Windows to switch to Windows layout, where you have like the Windows key, Control key and Alt key in the right places. However, if you're on a Mac and you want to use the keyboard with a Mac, all you need to do is press the function key and M key, which switches to Mac layout. If you need to restore the keyboard to the default factory settings, all you gotta do is press function two and escape for three seconds. When you do it, the backlight will blink red for three seconds and the keyboard will return to its default state. If you want to have some more advanced control over your keyboard, like changing the actuation level or rapid trigger sensitivity, you will need to use the dedicated software. Fortunately, you don't have to install anything. The software is browser-based, and I leave the link to the software in the video description down below if you want to follow the instructions. So first thing you need to do is to connect your keyboard. When you open the page, just click it. A pop-up window will pop up, and then you need to choose the keyboard you're using. For me, it's Drangdir A75. You need to click Connect. And here you can change two settings, either the color, which we just covered in the built-in menu. Well, here you can also adjust it and actually see what the effect does. For example, surfing, surfing, uh, glowing fish, whatever it's called. You can change it here and immediately see the effect on the keyboard as soon as you press save to keyboard. Now, I think the more, more interesting part is the performance tab. Here you can change various performance settings. Um, by the way, when I first connected the keyboard and I tried to enable rapid trigger, it didn't turn on for me. It just went on for a moment and then got back to off. If you have the same issue, uh, the solution to this is just to download the latest firmware and install it to your keyboard. After I've done that, the keyboard worked as intended and turning on rapid trigger actually stayed on and allowed me to change the rapid trigger settings. So now you can choose whether you want to change rapid trigger for, for specific keys. Uh, you can just click on the ones you want to change or you want to apply it to all keys. If you want to apply it to all keys, on the right you'll find a menu where you can choose just all and set the sensitivity of uh, rapid trigger or set the actuation point for different keys. Actuation point is pretty self-explanatory. As soon as the key reaches certain uh, press level, uh, it actuates. So mine is set at one millimeter. By setting it to one millimeter, I avoid any accidental press. And on the right side, you have key sensitivity settings when you enable the rapid trigger mode. If you disable it, it becomes great. So you need to enable it so to change the sensitivity of rapid trigger. Now, I would suggest avoiding 0.1 millimeter sensitivity as it might cause too much accidental input and might some cause some glitches in games. I actually set mine to 0.2. You can set it as low as 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and you probably won't notice a difference. So this is where you change the rapid trigger sensitivity settings. Um, if you want to save all the settings to your keyboard, uh, you, it doesn't happen automatically. You need to press the save to keyboard button and then yeah, the settings are saved and stored on your keyboard. You do not need to run anything in the background. Everything is stored on the memory. So you don't need a dedicated software running in the background to keep the RGB settings or keep the performance settings for you. And remember, another interesting feature is the turbo mode where uh, basically it disables all the unnecessary features like RGB, uh, lighting effects and so on and um, focuses on providing the least delay possible with this keyboard. If you're really all about uh, 
millisecond response times this is where you can do it this it will disable all the unnecessary features or secondary features uh, turn the lighting to static effect and just focus on delivering the inputs to your uh, pc as soon as fast as possible okay and that's it for today i hope you found this video helpful thank you so much for watching i'm laser and i'll see you soon